Good morning and welcome to Sunday Life from St Mary's Little Pondon and St Paul's Harlow Town Centre. The Lord be with you and also with you. Well, we have been gathering already this morning, 9.30 at St Mary's Little Pandon, and as we worship now, uh, our first communion at St Paul's since lockdown. So as we have this opening prayer, we think in our hearts and minds of the whole of our church community and indeed the whole Christian community across the world. We have gathered as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. And the special prayer for today. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, as we worship together, do please be joining in with the live chat and we can also share prayer needs there. Do subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. That's all very helpful to us. And we pray that you will know God's blessing as we worship together. Our thanks now to Samuel together with his son Simon as they lead us in Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you. So now let's head over to Virtual Sunday School. 
Hello and welcome to Virtual Sunday School! Today we're going to look at the church as one body of Christ. So we'll look at some verses in the Bible, some crafts, creative prayers and then finish with a final thought. So grab your drink and a biscuit and let's do this! When you're stuck at home with time to spare Can't go outside, you're not going anywhere why don't you pull up a chair or pull up a suit Tune into Virtual Sunday School We're the craft to do and a story or two Say hello to Nat, she's stuck at home too Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? We're going to look at what it means in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 to 27 when it talks about the church being like one body with many parts. So to help us explore those verses we're going to need help from some body and for some parts we'll need help from some body parts. Now a body has got lots of different parts. It's got eyes, it's got elbows, shoulders, tongue, and then it's got lots of inside parts as well, like your heart and your lungs and your bones. We've got ears, noses, legs, tails. Tails? Who wrote this list? We need each and every part that makes up our body so that we can function. It says in verse 12 that just like a body has lots of different parts, Christians are like a body made up of lots of different parts. You know, we're all very different. None of us are the same. But as Christians, we all believe in the same God, the same Jesus and the same Holy Spirit. And we all work together as one big global church. High five! <coughs> oh. <laughs> Just like in a human body, all the different parts of the body of Christ come together to work as a whole. Now the body only works by the different parts being, well, different. If the foot suddenly turned round to the hand and said, I'm not a hand so I don't belong in the body, well, that would be silly. It's still part of the body. It has a very different but equally as important job to do. If the whole body was a hand, how would we walk or eat? Or do all sorts of things? If the whole body were an eye, how would we hear or talk or do all sorts of things? If the whole body were an ear, how would we smell or dance or do all sorts of things? Actually, we need all sorts of different parts to make up a body. That's how God put it together and designed it to be. We're not all artists or teachers or builders or plumbers or scientists. We're not all kids and we're not all grown-ups. Imagine going to church and everyone got up to preach from the Bible at once. Or everyone tried to put the chairs out or everyone tried to clean the toilets. Everyone has a different part to play in the body of Christ and each part is just as important as another. And don't think your part isn't important, it is! And remember, the person who's cleaning the toilets is just as important as the person who might be up at the front in church. It says in the Bible that if one part of the body suffers, every part shares in its suffering. And if one part of the body is honoured, then every part shares in its joy. So everybody who loves Jesus, no matter where they are in the world, is part of one big body, the body of Christ. There are lots and lots of different disciples that make up the body of Christ. And each one of them is different, but each one of them is important to God. You know, everybody who watches virtual Sunday school doesn't go to the same church building on a Sunday. We don't all like the same things and a lot of us don't even live in the same country. But as disciples of Jesus, we are all part of the same body of Christ. And I think that's pretty cool. Now it's time to do some crafts. For today's craft, we are going to create a puzzle. 
You'll need some cardboard, scissors and some pens or pencils. We're going to draw a body outline and then we'll draw some lines that you can cut out to make the puzzle pieces. You can draw the puzzle lines however you like, but remember that straight lines will be easier to cut. Next, colour in and design your parts. Now you can colour in each part differently to remind us that each part plays a different role, but they're still part of the same body. And you can draw as many of those as you like. The more pieces, the harder the puzzle will be. Very carefully cut out the puzzle lines. Now you can mix up all your pieces and see if you can put them back together. Ta-da! If you're making a hard puzzle, you might want to ask your grown-up to take a photo before you mix up all your pieces so it can help you put it back together. For our creative prayers today, I want you to choose five things on your body and thank God for them. As you pray, you can point to each part you're thankful for and you can finish by thanking God that as Christians, we're all part of the same body of Christ. So, here's my prayer. Dear God, thank you for my ears that I can hear beautiful music. Thank you for my legs that I can walk and dance. Thank you for my eyes that I can see your amazing creation. Thank you for my nose that I can smell lovely flowers. And thank you for my mouth that I can praise you with my words. Thank you that all the parts in my body work together. And thank you that I'm part of a bigger body of Christ and that we're all one family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See you next week! Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? We began by thinking about God, our Creator. We've just been thinking about how wonderful God has made us with our infinite variety, all knit together in the Christ who is risen from the grave. God is a wonderful artist. In Psalm 139, it says to, it says to us, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. It goes on, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. So we're going to explore a little bit more how we are God's workmanship. And then we'll be thinking together about how, because we are knit together in Christ, because we are made by the one creator, we are therefore one in Christ. And Christ is the one who steps across all boundaries. And Nathan will be helping us think a little bit more about that. So we think of God, the wonderful artist, our creator. What defines a masterpiece? For some, there is hope, the quiet stirring of potential. In a world marked by beauty and sorrow, chaos and harmony, how many people have walked the earth, burdened with the need to answer this question? Does this hunt for magnificence conclude in the artist's brush? Or in the details so carefully laid out? layer upon layer. We've hunted for as long as we've roamed, humanity searching for purpose, reason. But all this time, we've been looking in the wrong places. We've dismissed the clues laid out for us as trivial, blinded ourselves by our own sense of worth. And we've missed the answer, even when it's death us in the face. For when we realize that beyond such magnificent attention to detail, the most crafted creation of all draws its breath in you. Formed to perfection in your mother's womb, each hair counted and each fingerprint shaped, none other bearing its form. Carved and sculpted, shaped and refined, the world's greatest masterpiece, you. You are the world's greatest masterpiece. Because you 
are created by the world's greatest artists. We come to the peace. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. We share a sign of God's peace using live chat together. दिलाए यीशु नाम शांति दिलाए यीशु नाम मुक्ति दिलाए यीशु नाम शांति दिलाए यीशु जन्म लिया यीशु चरणी में तूने जन्म लिया यीशु क्रूस पे किया विश्राम क्रूस पे किया विश्राम मुक्ति दिलाए यीशु नाम शांति दिलाए यीशु नाम दिलाए ये सुनाम शांति दिलाए ये सुनाम नाम 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 ये सुनाम नाम 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 ये सुनाम नाम 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 यीशु नाम 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 यीशु 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 पर अपना खून बहाया क्रूस पर अपना खून बहाया क्रूस पर अपना खून बहाया क्रूस पर अपना खून बहाया सारा चुकाया दाम सारा चुकाया दाम मुक्ति दिलाए ये सुनाम शांति दिलाए ये सुनाम मुक्ति दिलाए ये सुनाम शांति दिलाए ये Good morning. Today's Bible reading is taken from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 to 2, and verses 29 to 32. I asked them, Has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, for he foreknew. Do you not know the scripture? 
that says of Elijah, how he appeals to God against Israel. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, for just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you they also may now receive mercy. For God has concerned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 15 starting at verse 21 a woman's faith Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon a Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him son of David she cried out have mercy on me sir my daughter has a demon as in a, and is in a terrible condition but Jesus did not say a word to her his disciples came to him and begged him, Send her away, she is following us and making a lot of noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, please, she said. Jesus answered, It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered. But even the, de the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, David and Christine. We now affirm our faith after which Nathan will be speaking to us. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We say these words in bold together. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I had heard about him. Of course I had. I may be just a woman raising my child. I may live round about Tyre and Sidon, but I had heard about him all right. The Jewish teacher who moved from place to place telling stories, healing people. Any illness, any injury, any problem of body or spirit, Whatever it was, he could heal it. No wonder I had heard of him. Wouldn't you spread the word about such an amazing healing presence? So yes, even this single mother from the dodgy lands round Tyre and Sidon had heard about the wandering teacher with a gift for healing. And so he came to mind when my beloved little girl needed help. It's so hard to explain. She just wasn't herself anymore. The girl I loved, the girl I had raised with my own hands and the hands of my kinswomen was so full of life. I had spent so many years caring for her, nurturing her, making sure she was healthy and well. And she blossomed growing strong like one of our mighty cedar trees. But she started to disappear, that lively girl. She vanished, taking my hopes and dreams with her. In her place was someone I couldn't recognise, someone who seemed to come from somewhere beyond this world. All that life, all that care, 
all that health disappeared into shadow. A mysterious, strange presence had hold of my girl. Instead of her being a flourishing cedar, she was like a withered branch, drying and dying in the summer heat. The sort of branch that would fall to the ground, shrinking and curling, before eventually being crushed underfoot. That was my beloved girl when that evil came over her. And so I decided to seek help. As I say, I had heard of him, the healing teacher, the Jew who restored people to health wherever he went. And such was the excitement around him that I heard soon enough when he was supposed to be heading our way. So I prepared to set out and meet him, to ask for him to show his healing mercy upon my tormented, beloved daughter. Of course, I am not Jewish and my neighbourhood is somewhere a pious Jew would want to avoid. We were dodgy too interested in profit and pomp and not interested enough in their rules and customs. They still used our cedar wood in their temple though. They knew their God needed the best of every gift. So they brought our goods even as they scorned us. Of course it wasn't quite that simple. Their god seemed to welcome Canaanite women into the fold, part of their family histories. We all knew the stories of Ruth, who had married into and started a Jewish family, the family of their great David. And she had been devoted to her loved ones, finding the blessing of the God of Israel for her kin and blessing them in turn. Without her, no King David. So when I heard that the Jewish teacher was coming our way, I reminded myself of my foremother's love and determination and set out to meet him. And meet him I did, a day I will remember forever. So will he and his followers, I imagine. It started straightforwardly enough. I saw them coming through the haze of the day's heat. There was a small gathering of them, mostly men, but some women too. I had heard how he had no fear of our womanly presence. They had clearly been on the road, a bit dusty, a bit sweaty, but they all seemed content enough, chatting away. That didn't last. I marked out the teacher by his authority. They buzzed around him like bees. They were eager for his attention, saying something about clean and unclean. Too bad for them that I was eager for his attention too. Son of David, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. I had given my words much thought, wanting to make sure I was respectful, whilst making sure my need was clear. I showed that I knew him to be a Jew of important background and related to Canaanite Ruth. I made it obvious I was being respectful. I called him Sir. I knew he had the power in the conversation. I cried out for mercy was careful not to come across as too pushy. I've seen too many women be ignored for being pushy. As I say, I had given my words much thought. More thought than he gave to his reply, which was nothing, not a single word. Silence. It was hard to tell exactly what he was thinking. His face was unreadable. Was he surprised? I knew I had been careful, was sure to mind my words, and yet no response. 
the throng of followers started to shuffle round me, making sure to give my unclean Canaanite skin a wide berth. The teacher started to do the same, moving off, still silent, still mysterious. Well, I wasn't having any of that. I had a daughter engulfed in wickedness, haunted by some evil. This man could help. I knew it. This strange, silent teacher would help. Did any Canaanite woman ever succeed by letting some pious, oh so respectable man ignore her? They were heading further away. So this time, I really gave it some power. Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is in a terrible condition. The teacher and his followers continued to move off. Well, I wasn't having any of that. I followed after, repeating my cry. I could see them, looking embarrassed. One or two of them huddling near the teacher. I couldn't hear what they were saying, although I could imagine. Send her away. She is following us, making all this noise. Send her away. The teacher paused, still silent. For a man who supposedly had authority over sickness and command of demons, he seemed almost unsure of himself. Finally, he spoke. I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. What was that about? Was that directed at his followers? Was he talking to me? Me, who had come to ask his help. Was he really going to ignore me and my afflicted daughter? I dashed forward, hurling myself on the ground before any of his followers could stop me. Help me, sir. Surely that would do it. I was polite. I was insistent. I was desperate. What he said next was worse than the silence. It isn't right, the teacher replied, to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. The dogs. The dogs! I had come all this way, been so polite, my child in desperate need, and he called me a dog! Me! A dog! Me, who had raised a daughter without a father. Me, who had provided for us both, who used all my cunning and all my love to protect her. Me! who was the same sort of woman as his ancestors. Where would their precious covenant, their own so holy Messiah be without us dogs? I wasn't going to let him get away with that. Fortunately, I know a thing or two about dogs. Looking up from the dust, I answered, that's true, sir, but even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. His followers stared, waiting for him to dismiss me for my cheat. But their teacher looked at me. I wasn't sure what he was thinking, but it looked like he was realising something. You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. That was it. I could feel it in my bones. As soon as he said that, there was peace. My worries, my anxieties for my precious girl, 
all were held in those words. I wouldn't get home for a while, but I knew that my darling girl would be there to greet me, strong and graceful like our cedars, beautiful with a life no longer held in wicked shadow. And so it proved, but first I needed to get back to her. I rose from the ground and began walking home. I didn't say anything else. I didn't need to. I had shown the famous Jewish healer and all his followers what a Canaanite woman can do. I had shown them all what a persistent faith looks like. They had all seen that there was more than enough mercy to leave leftovers for everyone. It was a lesson they would never forget. And if they did, I was sure their God would remind them. After all, their God seemed to have a soft spot for clever, creative and determined women, especially Canaanite ones. All of which is to say, woof woof. morning all, let us pray. Dear merciful Heavenly Father, we bow down before Thee with great praise, gratefulness and thankfulness for who You are in our lives. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. May they know the power of Your healing love. Make us willing agents of Your compassion. God of love, I pray for our Harlow town and our church, St. Paul's and St. Mary's, also all the churches in the world. Bless the ministry and the worship that takes place there. Lord, I pray for Martin, Jokey, Nathan and all the church leaders in all the churches. God of mercy, I bring before thee all of them who are suffering from the coronavirus. Lord, have mercy on us and touch us with your healing power. Lord, also comfort the families and friends of the ones who have lost their lives due to this coronavirus. Please forgive their sins and grant them peace. God of life, I pray for the disaster in Beirut. Have mercy on the people there, Lord. Grant them comfort and strength. God of light, Protect us and our families, friends, from any sickness and viruses. Cover us with your blood. You are our shield. You are greater than any disease. We cancel the work of the enemy in your name. No illness or sickness will come our way. God of truth, in these difficult times, unite our nations and guide our leaders with your wisdom. Give us courage to overcome our fears and help us to build a future in which we all share. Lord of life and peace, I lift all of us to you. You love us more than we do. Even before the creation of the world, we were engraved on your heart. Ignite within us a holy passion and fire and cannot be quenched. Draw us to yourself with an everlasting love and hope that cannot be shaken. May the light of your truth illuminate our path 
and keep us growing into your saving knowledge. We ask these mercies in the name of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. So we say together uh, in our own languages at home if we want. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much, David and Christine, for the readings, Nathan for the sermon, Rupali and Joki for the prayers. As we come to our final hymn, How Great Thou Art, during this hymn there is an opportunity to bring our gifts to God, perhaps in live chat saying something that you are thankful for or committing something to God, Maybe something that you have created or done or achieved this last week. There's the opportunity, if you wish, now or later to make a financial gift. And details are down below uh, on YouTube and you can see uh, details there of how to give online. And so we join together in our final hymn, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy path throughout the universe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul. How great thou art. 
We receive God's blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless and do join us next week on Sunday Live. He's my Saviour He's my Saviour He's my Saviour Christ the Lord He's my Saviour He's my Savior, He's my Savior, Christ the Lord. He was crucified, He was crucified, He was crucified, Christ the Lord. He is risen. Oh